Um, I want you to turn, you got you guys are on table, so I want you to turn to your tables and just say this to one another. I want you to say this phrase to one another. Every, every day is an opportunity for your neighbor to see God's presence in you. Okay? So every day is an opportunity for your neighbor to see God's presence in you. Go ahead, say, say that to one another. And prophesy that you <laughs> Could be your neighbor, your colleague, your friends. Thank goodness. Family. That's, that's quite remarkable, isn't it? Like when you think of it, every day is an opportunity for someone to see God's presence in us. Now, this this um, afternoon, I was with some friends, and I got to meet other Christians from different churches. And then I just realized that most of our chat, we were just excited about God, what God was doing. You know, they were excited what God was doing in their lives, and vice versa, in, in the churches, and how God's been sending people and working people. So that was just on my mind this afternoon, that everywhere we are, we were in a very unusual place to be talking about this stuff. We were at Laser Zone, shooting each other <laughs> in Leeds. But it doesn't matter, does it? Like every day, when we walk out of here, it's an opportunity for God uh, to really show himself uh, in us. Um, so we're going to be speaking on Daniel 2. Uh, I'll give a little recap of last chapter just so for us to kind of connect the second chapter but obviously i noticed that this came up and this was just in in as i was working in my notes i didn't realize that that didn't change that it was just an initial <laughs> title so if that message title wouldn't be that nebuchadnezzar's dream of the statue I, mean, I think it would be something more like our god is sovereign okay uh, that's more of the theme but anyways it, it doesn't matter for now but um so in chapter one we michael um preached a few weeks ago in chapter 1. And just to, to recap a little bit, to refresh your mind, so the, the, some of the young men, you know, from Israel, from Judah, they were captured by the Babylonian kingdom. Uh, they sat the land and they took them. Uh, and they weren't just any men. They were special young men. They were trained, you know, they were educated. Uh, but they were taken to be trained by an enemy king, you know, to serve an enemy king. So imagine yourself, you know, being taken from your home and going to be trained to serve your enemy. Um, and then we also see in that chapter when, um, you know, they're, uh, they're there and they're given all this amazing food and this banquet. But actually, they, they see that they don't want to defile themselves with the king's food. You know, that there are things that they, didn't, they weren't supposed to eat according to their laws. So they decide to stand firm, you know, Daniel and his friends. And in that, you know, God honored them. You know, and God blessed them because they didn't eat all the stuff the other guys ate, but they looked much better. And God, not only that, we could see that God blessed them in such a way that God gave them knowledge, understanding. Um, uh, it says, too, that Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. And the king saw no other young men, you know, amongst all the wise men, all the, the, the wizards that king had approached. None of them were like these guys, and they were ten times better, it says. Uh, that's how the chapter ends. So just for us to, to remember uh, where we kind of stopped. And then uh, if we can go to the next slide, I'll just give you a little outline of what, how it's broken up. Then we're going to read uh, chapter 2 in a second. But this is kind of how it's broken down. in. Uh, and then I'm going to invite um, Matt Lush. She's going to read uh, the chapter for us. So if you can open your uh, Bibles, you have some on the tables there, to chapter 2. We're going to be reading the full chapter, just so we kind of have that really fresh, and then we'll get going, okay? Thanks, man. Okay, Daniel chapter 2, uh, it's on page uh, 884, uh, if you've got one of these very nice looking Bibles on the table. Okay, Daniel chapter 2. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. 
When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king, May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was, and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces, and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honour. So, tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Once more they replied, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will interpret it. And then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time because you realise that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king, There is no one on earth who can do what the king asks. No king! However great and mighty has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or astrologer, what the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among humans. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death. And men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. And he asked the king's officer, why did the king issue such a harsh decree? Arioch then explained the matter to Daniel. And at this, Daniel went into the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream before him. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And he urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. And then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the God, the name of God for ever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You've given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Then Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to execute the wise men of Babylon, and said to him, Do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king, and I will interpret his dream for him. Arioch took Daniel to the king at once and said, I found a man among the exiles from Judah who can tell the king what his dream means. The king asked Daniel, also called Belshazzar, are you able to tell me what I saw in my dream and interpret it? And Daniel replied, no wise man, enchanter, magician or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he is asked about. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you were lying in bed are these. As your majesty was lying there, your mind turned to things to come, and the revealer of mysteries showed you what is going to happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me. Not because I have greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. 
your majesty looked and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. And while you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands, and it struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace, but the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and it filled the whole earth. This was the dream, and now we will interpret to the king. Your majesty, you are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds in the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them all. You are that head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise, inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes everything. And as iron breaks things to pieces, so it will crush and break all the others. Just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom. Yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. As the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honour and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, chief ministers over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Thanks, man. That was fantastic. So, as we start off, we see that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he has a dream, and it's quite surprising, his reaction, is unusual. He has an unusual and brutal request. So why did he insist on asking the wise men uh, to tell him the dream first? That was unusual, right? So why, why did he do that? So it's most likely that he wanted to be sure that he could trust the interpretation and not just get some, something just to save their neck, right? So um, then we see that after his request, he, he kind of gives this contrast it's like if you succeed in telling what i what what i dreamed you know i will give you great rewards but if you can't <laughs> that's it you know like <laughs> you know and um, you're going to be executed and your house is destroyed so that uh, his decree of death actually 
included people that had nothing to do with, that weren't even there, you know. So uh, God's men, uh, Daniel and his friends, were all included in this crazy decree. And so this affected them as well, okay. So why did Nebuchadnezzar have this dream? Okay, we see in the scriptures that first he would know, like we can see after we see the story, that first he would know that there is one true God. So we'll see as we look through the story that he's going to see that Israel's God is a true God. He's the one that can control future events, the one that sees everything. You know, and oftentimes these kings, they could see themselves as gods, as if they were the ruler of everything, right? But he's going to see that who is real, the real God. And also God, he wanted him to have, uh, to be aware of what's coming, okay? So if you think of kings in that rule today or governors, they might be the ruler or the, the person who calls the shots at the moment for a certain period of time and for a certain domain, right? But they cannot tell what is coming. You know, God is not over, not only sovereign over everything that is now. He knows what's coming. He knows what was. He knows everything. You know, so he's about to get a glimpse of that. Then as we, as we move on, we see that uh, Daniel actually, he responds with boldness. Okay? Uh, though, you know, at first you're quite impressed, right? You're like, whoa, man, Daniel, amazing. But then if you look. His neck's on the line here, so he's got nothing to lose, okay? So he's like, man, I better do something. So, yeah, he is bold, and he does respond in faith, but also he's being pressed, right? And sometimes it's a blessing for us to be pressed, because that's when we sometimes are bolder than we would be if we're not pressed. I've seen that in my life. I've seen that in uh, church's life. You know, sometimes when things really get tough, that's when we, we step out in faith the most. So Daniel here is responding in, in boldness. But what is something that is important for us to learn is how Daniel shows the right response in crisis. Okay? So how does he respond to crisis? He leads his friends to seek the Lord. Okay? He leads his friends to prayer. So actually, I want to ask us that question. Okay? What do we do in times of crisis? What do we do when we're in a fix? Do we blame God? You know, man, that's not fair. God, I, I, I was here praying for you. How's this affecting me? That's, you know, what's this king doing? How's that fair? You know, do we grumble? Do we lose our faith? You know, that's it. Things are not going the way I like. I didn't expect that. My faith is gone. Um, do we abandon God? Or do we... Ask God if he's abandoned us. But Daniel and his friends, actually, they hadn't done anything to deserve this decree, right? But it's completely unfair. But they respond the right way. They say, okay, there's a crisis. There's a bind. Like, I have no idea what to do. I don't have the answers. But I know who does. I know the God I serve. I know God is with me. I know he's, he, he can do something. So I better go to the one that can actually make a difference here. And not only does Daniel seek the Lord like this, he, he rounds up his friend. I love that, you know, like he rounds up his friends. Like, hey, hey, let's pray. Let's fast. Let's seek the Lord. Let's ask for an answer. Let's ask God to reveal uh, whatever he showed the, the king or whatever dream he had, because otherwise, you know, we're in trouble. But God can do this. Come on, let's ask for God's grace. Um, and he shows remarkable faith, even though he's in a bind. How, how do we know he shows remarkable faith? Because he goes and tells um, the king's servant, he says, Hey, make an appointment with the king for me, and I'll tell him what his dream means. He had no clue what the dream was yet. You know, he hadn't been, <laughs> he hadn't even gone pray yet, but he knew what he was going to do, but he was already said, make an appointment. You know, sometimes don't we need to do the same? You know, it's like, where is the money com coming from to build a building? No, but let's get the parting permission, you know. Oh, where, yeah, you know, I don't know uh, how I'm going to get this job. Yeah, but put the application, you know. I don't know how God's going to, to heal me. Yeah, but pray, you know. we we got to do something, don't we, when we, we are pressed and hard. And, yeah, when we are in unlikely situations, we have to have bold faith. So, and I really like that. I love men of faith. I love when people are bold. And I think God likes that. I think God can sometimes is like, man, you guys pray too small. You would think, you know, like, 
come on, you know, like, I'm God, I'm all powerful, I can do amazing things, you know, put me on the spot, I think he says that to me sometimes, you know, it's like, come on, you can, you can, you can, you can ask, you can share things with me, you can seek me for bigger things, uh, not, I'm not talking about material things, I'm talking about God's power being displayed, okay, um, and then as we continue, we see that Daniel and his friends, they pray for revelation in this mystery, what is this dream, you know, so that's what they're praying for, and what do they do when God answers their, their prayer? Here's another thing we can learn with Daniel and his friends. Daniel praises and thanks God for his wisdom, and his might, before he goes to see the king. Okay, so we see uh, in verse 20 and 23, it's going to come up so we can, if you can put that up, then if you just follow on. Um, we can see that he says, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are His. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with Him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made me known. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. So, what do I learn from that? Is we don't forget to praise and thank God when he comes through in our lives. So many times we pray for things, right? But then when God does something, oh, yeah, that, you know, that, that was just because I studied really hard, so I passed the, the exam, you know. Or uh, you, you're healed from cancer. I said, no, that, chemo is just really advanced nowadays, you know. Oh, amazing provisions. No, no, that's just because my family just helped me out, you know. Or my friends came through. No. The thing what we can see here through his prayer that it's not Daniel. It's not Daniel that is wise. It's not Daniel that is good. It's not that his friends are different than anybody else. Even though they are men of God and they seek the Lord. But where does this power come from? Where does the interpretation come from? Where does uh, the, the promotion that they're going to get come from? It's from God. It's not Daniel. It's God. It's not chemo. It's God. It's not because you're qualified for that new job. It's God. It's not because you're wise. It's God. It's not because you have the right words or you know what to say. It's God's power in our lives displayed. It's His presence in us that makes all the difference. So Daniel was only able to interpret the dream because the God of heaven reveals mysteries. Okay? So remember, God is sovereign. Okay? God is sovereign. He's sovereign over all the situation. He, he's sovereign in knowledge. He's got control. You know, he knows what he's doing and he is good. He knows what is going to happen. So maybe you're facing some kind of situation today. You got no clue how you're going to react, how, you, how to even start. Remember tonight, God is sovereign. He knows what's coming. He knows <laughs> what's next week. He knows what he can do and he's good. Okay. Um, and, and God is also sovereign in authority. He's in control. Sometimes we might be thinking, what next? You know, so next week is the election in Brazil, and we've been praying as a church. Millions of people are going into the street to pray. You know, I showed some of uh, my friends a video of mil uh, well, millions of Brazil Brazilians in Brasilia, our capital, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, praying for the country. You know, and, and we, are, we, we don't want certain things to happen again in our country. We want God to keep leading. But overall, what do we got to do? We have to trust. We do our bit, we go, we vote, uh, we pray, we seek the Lord. But we got to know that it's not the government that leads our lives. It's not the government that calls a shot. It's God. He is in control. Even though we have to do our parts, we pray for our government. But remember, God is over everything. He is the one true God. He is the King of Kings. He is the only one that is eternal. Nebuchadnezzar is reign won't last, you know. Uh, the government, you know, governments are voted out four and four years, five and five years, whatever. They don't last, you know. Even now we, we might be facing, you know, like, oh, we had a great queen and she's just such a blessing, godly woman. Yes, that's fantastic. 
But our hope is not in the queen, is it? It's in the king. It's the queen's king. It's in the queen's God. It's in who she actually revealed uh, to the country. So we can still pray for King Charles. We can pray for the new government. We, but we know that we have a God that is not. His reign is not going to pass away. He's sovereign. Our hope is not in our current government. It is in God. And we can see a contrast as well. I think there's a, a thing about. Yeah, we can see the contrast here between God's ability, the one true sovereign God's ability, and the inability of the pagans, right? So there's no match. There's absolutely no match to what God revealed through Daniel, who probably wasn't trained like these other guys, weren't wizard, whatever, but he, he could reveal things. He could interpret dreams. Why? Because the Lord of Lords revealed it to him. And he says that again, it's not anything I've done. I'm not special, but I know my God can reveal uh, what you have dreamed, and he can interpret what you have dreamed. So we can see this contrast. And in that, I want to, to remember, remind you of a contrast, okay? When you're in a bind, when you're in a fix, when things aren't looking well, remember God's ability against the inability of the what the world has to offer, okay? The world might try to, uh, to reveal things to us. It might try to give us ideas of things. But remember, if you compare God's ability in your life and the inability of what the world has to offer, there's absolutely no match. Okay? So, what does this dream mean that the king has? The dream is about kingdoms. Okay? And it's starting with Nebuchadnezzar in his current kingdom, but also it's pointing to kingdoms to come. So, I'm going to have... Um, there's a picture here that you can see. Uh, yeah, what does the statue mean? So we get here, and as you as that's up, I'll kind of explain. So the head, okay, gold is Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. That's from 671 to 539 BC, not just Nebuchadnezzar, but the kingdom of Babylon. Uh, and God had given Babylon uh, great dominion, power, and glory. The nation had become this vast empire, and Nebuchadnezzar was a, ruled ruthlessly. And Babylon itself was quite an amazing achievement. But after, after uh, Nebuchadnezzar and after Babylon, there would be two more kingdoms, each inferior to the previous one, in glory and unity, uh, in not as strong as the one before. Okay, So that's why you see this contrast of gold, silver, Bronze, you see it, it's like losing value. It's like, it's not as powerful. Okay? It's not as good, supposedly. So we got the, uh, sorry, gold is Babylon. Then we got the silver one, which is the chest area, Middle Persian kingdom. And then uh, the bit after that is the Greeks, okay, Greek empire. And then the bottom is uh, is the Roman empire. Okay, so here it says Ro uh, Holy Roman Empire, but it's, it's, it's this mix. It's both. It, like, it's just a fourth kingdom. It's the Roman Empire. Okay? Uh, the fourth kingdom is uh, would be strong as iron, yet it's quite unstable because of the composite of different people who would hold together. Okay? This mix they have. Then we get this vision as well of a rock, you know, a small rock that comes and hits the feet of this statue, a stone. And it knocks because, you know, this kingdom is not strong. The, the feet are not strong. It breaks and everything comes tumbling down, right? And everything comes to pieces like chaff. So what does the rock mean? You can go to the next slide. The rock is Christ in his kingdom. Okay? God will establish a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. A kingdom has started. His final kingdom, which will ultimately destroy all these kingdoms, right? Uh, and they will never pass away. But the interesting thing that I love in this picture is that the rock, it, first of all, it didn't come from men, right? It just, this rock just comes. And then it says that it's quite, it's not like a massive rock. You know, it's a small rock, starts small, but it grows into a mountain, you know? So isn't that a great picture of God's kingdom? You know, the member that must have seen uh, it can start small. It can look insignificant. Perhaps you're looking around here, and our numbers here look insignificant. 
but I can tell you and remind you, hey, it's growing, okay? God's kingdom is growing. What he's doing in us is growing. The impact he's going to have is growing. So what God is doing in your life may not look that significant. You might be thinking, oh, it's so small. It's, I'm the only Christian in my family. You know, my wife's not even converted yet, my kids. But it's growing. The Lord is at work, and he's going to do great things. Remember that you become a great mountain. And that is a great picture of God's kingdom on earth. And, and in the last bit, we see that Nebuchadnezzar, actually he promotes Daniel, he honors Daniel, but obviously he honors God as well. Look what he says in verse 47, just a reminder. He says, Surely, uh, the king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the Lord of kings. In revealer of mysteries, for you are able to reveal this mystery. Do you see the, the difference? Uh, that the servant, I forgot his, his name, the guy was started with an A, 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 Arioch, yeah, sorry. Arioch, he, he kind of tries to bring the glory to himself a bit. He's like, Nebuchadnezzar, king, I found a man. You know, it's like, I found a man who can interpret your dream. <laughs> but actually, the king's like, he found nothing. It's like God revealed, you know. Surely this man's God is the real deal, you know. He reveals mystery. Look what he's done. Um, and then the other cool thing is Daniel's attitude. Look what Daniel does when he is honored. Daniel honors his friends. He honors the guys that prayed with him. He honors the, the men that were around him when they were stuff. You know, they didn't know the outcome when they were praying. They had faith in the outcome, but they hadn't been revealed the outcome yet, did they? They didn't know that they were going to be honored. But he remembered them. He remembered who was prayed with him. He remembered who was paid a price with him, who's been with him in tough situations. So what I want to encourage you with that is don't forget your friends who pray with you when God gives you an answer, when God honors you, when God blesses you. You know, remember the people that Paid a price with you. The people that spent nights praying for you, that called you, that visit you, that you when know, no one else was around, they were there praying for you. Those people have a real, real value in our lives. So Daniel honors his friends, and I really love that. And then I wanted to conclude. Just it's it's there uh, the points, but I have a bit more notes here, so I'll, I'll use mine uh, to finish. It's just that when we're in a fix, you know. Um, when things aren't going our way, go to God first. Seek the Lord with everything you've got. Go to the King of Kings. You're struggling with addiction. Go to God. You're struggling in your marriage. Seek the Lord. You're struggling for a job. Seek Him. But here He gives us another great tip. Pray, seek, ask, and include your friends in that. A lot of times we include our friends in complaining. Oh, it's hard. My goodness, I lost my job. You know, oh, I don't know what's going on. You know, my, my girlfriend broke up with me. <laughs> we just tell bad news, right? But actually, no. Include your friends to seek the Lord, to pray with you. Sometimes we don't have enough strength on our, on our own. We need the Lord. We need to rely on Him. But good friends around us can encourage us, can help you pray, can give you that extra push. So Daniel did that, and we can learn that with him. Um, the other thing is God's plans, God's purposes, His promises are trustworthy. He always comes good. Just look at what He's done in the Bible. Look at the stories. and We see everything being complete, all His promises being fulfilled. And look, even in your life, you know, Paul says, I want to bring to memory that what brings me hope. Remember what God's done. Remember how far He's brought us. Remember that miracles He's done, the blessings He's given you. How he's spoken things into your life. You know, uh, he's, he comes good. He's good. He knows he's in control. Uh, the other bit is uh, don't freak out. You know, all hope is not in our world. All ho our hope is not in our current kingdom, in our government, in who wins the election, in who runs the country, in who is your bo new boss. Your hope is in the king of kings. He's got you in your, his hands. He's the one that leads you. He's the one that sends you. He's the one that is with you at every bit of the, the, the way. God is in charge. He's in complete control. He is good. 
and he knows what he's doing. We can trust him. God is the one that brings the solution. He's the one that reveals mystery. All glory is his. And if we are blessed, you know, if you are promoted, if you are honored in the process, don't forget why. Don't forget where it came from or who did it. It was the Lord. Amen? Amen. Um, before, uh, I have a few questions. If, do we have time to go into tables, yeah? So, I, actually, I'm making it quite personal. So, I, I wanted to you guys to, to go around tables and just ask these questions to, to uh, one another. What do you do? Like, tr let's be honest. You know, what have you been doing? What do you do in times of crisis in your own life? Who do you go to in times of crisis? And what do you do when God answers your prayers? What, what is our reaction when God answers our prayers? So just share that a, a little bit. There might be some experiences that you guys have that you can really encourage one another. There might be some experience that you can share that will encourage someone that is not in a good moment, you know, in a good place. And obviously, we could learn uh, to respond as Daniel and his friends did as well. Okay, then after a few minutes, I'll come up and, and close us in prayer.